Uh, it is a pleasure to be here uh, at the University of Texas uh, uh, and, and with the leadership of, of this great uh, uh, team that you put together here. Um, Chairman Cigaroa, uh, wherever you are back behind us there, and um, President Callender, it's a pleasure to be with you, sir. James Huffines, the Chairman of the Board of Regents, the University of Texas, all of those. Uh, You all have put a wonderful team of leaders together uh, at this institution and at that system. And um, I was just telling James on the way down here that uh, if I had as much control as some people seem to think I do, the Aggies would be winning some football games. <laughs> um, but I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, not only uh, these standing directly behind me, but those in this audience who understand just how powerful today is and what an important day it is for this island, uh, and not just this island, uh, but for the state of Texas, uh, for uh, <laughs> communities, I know Craig uh, Island, who has just been an absolute champion of this process. <laughs> Larry Taylor, uh, who represents this area as well. I, I hope all of you have the opportunity to both uh, collectively and singularly tell them thank you, uh, because the fact of the matter is we would not be here today without their work and without their doggedness uh, on this issue, uh, the, the intellect, the professionalism, and the camaraderie of uh, two individuals who may not share the same initial behind their name, uh, but what they do share is a love for this area and a love for the state. Um, not, <laughs> I told someone the other day is when the session was over with, there are probably 49 other governors that would love to be standing up and proclaiming what we were able to accomplish in our legislative session. You know, particularly considering the economic times we were in, the idea that we finish that session with a balanced budget, uh, that we cut taxes for 40,000 additional small businesses, that we left $9 billion in a rainy day fund, that we passed the most sweeping reform of the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association, uh, that we were able to pass a eminent domain bill to protect private property rights, that we increase financial aid by 40 percent for <laughs> universities and community colleges, young people who want the opportunity to go and uh, have a chance to succeed in the state. Uh, all of those things that we were able to accomplish during a recession is nigh on miraculous. And to have had all of that and the understanding of how important it was to maintain UTMB, to bring this institution and that hospital back to a level uh, of even better than it was before uh, was truly a miraculous session. Uh, this first bill... You know, the first bill is HB 4586, and I'm going to spare you the details of a 70-page uh, document. So, but I want to fo focus on a couple of uh, uh, issues, two elements that really matter. Um, you know, as we gather here on what is a beautiful day and the beach is full of people and uh, the folks are enjoying uh, the, uh, that beautiful beach in the city and, and uh, it, it's kind of hard to, to, to think about the destructive force and bad weather that uh, uh, blew ashore last year. But those of us who watch the Weather Channel uh, on a regular basis know that uh, hurricane season has already been kicked off and uh, uh, the memories of last year's storm still lingers very strongly in uh, our memories and uh, your daily lives. The Gulf of Mexico certainly helps make Texas a wonderful vacation destination. And it plays a key role in our state's position as the nation's leading exporter. But it also exposes our citizens to very brutal storms. This past year was especially tough on this area. Hurricane Ike destroyed homes. It displaced our citizens. It knocked out one of the only 
three level one trauma centers in this area. And I'm pleased that the legislature has seen fit to fund a number of key initiatives through this bill, including more than $425 million for disaster-related costs and expenditures, including $62 million in first-time funding for uh, our disaster contingency fund. This was something that Craig and I had talked about early on in the session, that uh, we need to be able to uh, timely uh, reimburse those private sector partners who come and do he heroic yeoman's work in protecting our citizens and saving lives. And we were now have that uh, as a tool to use. Bill also includes, includes $150 million for UTMB, which will help it continue to serve this area uh, by treating patients, training doctors, some of these young, bright, capable men and women standing behind us, and setting the standard for medical excellence in this area. And I'm here today to announce that full funding for our disaster-related expenditures and the completion of UTMB Galveston is in the final version of the budget that I signed yesterday. 